हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल दैट इज फिजिक्स वाली मैडम यस यू आर राइट सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विद आवर वीडियो दैट इज फॉर द सेकंड पीयूसी और द 12th स्टैंडर्ड फिजिक्स दैट इज योर फेवरेट फर्स्ट चैप्टर दैट इज इलेक्ट्रिक चार्ज एंड फील्ड ओके सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर so we have already started one video if you have not watched my first video of this chapter please go and watch the first video then you can switch on to the second video so now we are talking about about today conductors insulators and the basic properties of electric charge and we will discuss coulomb's law okay so this is going to be interesting today so let us begin so let us see what are conductors and insulators so already you have you are knowing about what are the conductors and insulators but even then we will brush up these topics because there is these are important for this chapter yes let us go for it so if you have not subscribed my channel please subscribe to my channel okay the uh, like share and comment okay let us start yes what are conductors let us see what are conductors so conductors are basically they are the substances which readily show or allow the passage of electric charge through them so there is a conductor and there are electrons so when the electric current is passed through it the this conductor it will allow the charges to pass through it so such substances are called conductors okay so example are metals human bodies animal bodies living plants and trees salt solutions like electrolytes acids are also called are the conductors so which is the pure conductor it is gold and silver so as these are very very costly we will not use this gold and silver we use the copper instead of this copper is used as a good conductor right so all you know i think okay so now let us go to the and when the charges are transferred to a conductor the charges resides on the surface of the conductor because inside there are electrons which are negatively charged so due to the repulsive effect they will the charges will reside on the positive uh, on the upper surface of the conductor okay so i hope you have understood there are no free charges inside they will and due to the repulsive force they will the charges are accom accommodated on the surface of the conductor now let us go to the insulators so what are insulators the insulators are the substances which do not allow the electric charges to pass through them easily are called insulators example plastic wood glass okay but these these can be charged when they are rubbed with another insulator okay they are either give positive charge or negative charge whereas the conductors they are not electrified due to friction but they are electrified due to conduction that is they when they are in contact with when one charged conductor is in contact with the another charged conductor then the charges will be residing on the surface in the conductors in insulators they are charged due to friction there are three methods of electrification so one is conduction another is induction method 
and the third one is friction or due to rubbing charges can neither be created nor destroyed but they can be transferred from one substance to another substance so the body which loses the charge is positive charge and the body which gains the charge is no is uh, has the negative charge okay then let us see charging by induction so let us take a glass rod and rub this glass rod with a silk cloth so what happens is the charges from the glass rod is given to the silk cloth so charges are moving from the glass rod to the silk rod so char there is deficiency of the charges in the glass rod the glass rod will have positive charge the silk cloth will have negative charge negative charge sorry uh, so charging by induction is sorry i confused here so this is charging by friction charging by induction is so if the conductors are not in contact with each other due to the force of attraction between the charges they are not in contact with each other even then the force they induce the uh, charges to move on the other substance so this is by charging by induction then let us go to the basic properties of charges so what are ba this is the first topic actually this is the first real topic of this chapter it starts with with basic properties of charges very 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 important it will be asked in your all type of exam that is you first quarterly you meet um, your preparatory and your board okay so first of all let us see the first basic property there are two types of charges namely positive and negative charge they are but their uh, effects tend to cancel each other so if uh, there are same number of positive and negative charge the body will be neutral okay they it will be neutral then electric charge carried by a body is not affected by its motion so if the charge is motion in motion its effect does not affect or if the body is in motion the charges are not affected by the motion of the body like charges repel each other and like charges attract each other that you know so positive negative they attract positive positive or negative negative they repel positive negative negative positive they attract electric charge ye gundu electric charge is a scalar quantity they obey additive nature okay that is net charge is equal to q1 plus q2 plus q3 and so on plus of minus q4 like this and they are quantized that is q is equal to any this is the formula for quantization of the charges that is n is the integral multiple of the charge e is the magnitude of the charge e is equal to I'll, next in next slide i will tell you what is e then in an isolated system the total number of charges remain conserved so if a system is isolated so total number of the positive charge should be equal to the total number of negative charges hence it will be conserved then let us see the magnitude of the electric charge so 1 e is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb the unit of charge is coulomb so in one coulomb how many charges are there means so q is equal to so ne 
so that is n we have to know q by e that is 1 upon 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 so n is equal to Six point two five into ten to the power of twenty eight electrons. So this is the number which you have to remember. So total in one coulomb we have six point two five into ten to the power of a twenty eight electrons. Yes. Let us go to the next topic. That is the. coulomb's law so what is coulomb's law the magnitude of force between any two ch point charges is directly proportional to the product of the of the two charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and it will be always acted along the line joining the two charges so suppose if we have two charges one is q1 and q2 irrespective of the polarity and if they are sub, uh, separated by a distance r then the force is directly proportional to the pr product of the magnitude of the two charges q1 q2 and f is inversely proportional to r square so therefore f is equal to f is equal to f is proportional to q1 q2 by r square or f is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 by r square where k is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not and experimentally its value is so Uh, k is equal to 9 into 10 to the power of 9 therefore f is equal to k q1 q2 by r square so this is coulomb's law so in the next class we will discuss the vector form of coulomb's law thank you for watching bye bye take care